by six anthropologists, it was concluded that the bias actually came from Gould, who incidentally was raised by a Marxist father and was an avid political activist. Jared Diamond is the famous Jewish author of the book Guns, Germs, and Steel, in which he posits why Eurasian peoples conquered or displaced Native Americans, Australians, and Africans. He argues against any biological advantages unique to Eurasians, and instead points to the features of the Eurasian continent, such as its high diversity of wild plant and animal species suitable for domestication, and its east-west major axis that favored the spread of those domesticates, people, and technologies for long distances with little change in latitude. Now, Diamond certainly made some valid observations, as did Boas, but he also omitted things like the strong correlation between latitude and IQ. At or close to the equator, the average IQ is 69, whereas at a latitude of 54 degrees, the average is 98. Despite this, Diamond essentially argues that you could select and test at random African pygmies and the Japanese, and no patterns in cognitive ability or personality would form. Even now, as more and more data confirm the biological reality of racial and ethnic differences, some Jewish geneticists are still trying to spin the narrative. David Reich, in an opinion piece in the New York Times, said, quote, My laboratory discovered in 2016, based on our sequencing of ancient human genomes, that whites are not derived from a population that existed from time immemorial, as some people believe. Instead, whites represent a mixture of four ancient populations that lived 10,000 years ago, and were each as different from one another as Europeans and East Asians are today, unquote. The insinuation here that in order for white to be a meaningful category of identity, white people need to have existed since time immemorial and be entirely pure is absurd because it requires a set of criteria that literally no species or subspecies can meet. Interestingly, Ashkenazi Jews have only existed as a distinct genetic group for about one-fifth of the time that Europeans have, yet they're one of the most safeguarded and cherished peoples on the planet and folks like Jordan Peterson have no issue identifying them as a unique population with aggregate cognitive abilities that differ from those of other populations. All throughout David Reich's book, Who We Are and How We Got Here, he rails against the notion of purity, while he repeatedly uses the semantically equivalent term unmixed to refer to ghost populations that gave rise to the various groups scattered about the globe today. Essentially, Reich tries to dismiss the spirit of race realism on an autistic technicality, the question today is not whether or not Africans, Europeans, Asians, etc. are different species. It's whether or not we are genetically distinct, and whether or not these distinctions are meaningful, insofar that they've contributed to the traditions and values our respective groups have cultivated over time. While Reich acknowledges non-trivial differences between populations, for example in predisposition to diseases, he mostly dismisses the notion of meaningful aggregate differences in cognition and physical ability. He says, for example, that, quote, for most traits, hard work in the right environment are sufficient to allow someone with a lower genetically predicted performance at some task to excel compared to people with a higher genetically predicted performance, unquote. Now, without a doubt, the African pygmies should be treated with every bit of dignity and respect that all human beings deserve. But the pygmy IQ bell curve is so far removed from that of Ashkenazi Jews that it's irresponsible to keep pretending that their population can produce someone of the intellectual caliber of David Reich who is likely seven standard deviations above their average intelligence. Again, the work of David Reich in his laboratory is not without merit, but he often insinuates an agenda. Quote, To understand the power of the genome revolution for undermining old stereotypes about identity and building up a new basis for identity, consider how its finding of repeated mixture in human history has destroyed nearly every argument that used to be made for biologically based nationalism. Unquote. On one hand, Reich recognizes that despite the genetic diversity of ancient populations, Europe has become genetically homogenous over thousands of years, and yet he feels compelled to say things like this, quote, The findings of the ancient DNA revolution suggest that the mixtures will continue. Mixture is fundamental to who we are, and we need to embrace it, not deny that it occurred, unquote. Interestingly, Reich also highlights in his book that during ancient migrations, foreign men bred with local females to the exclusion of local males, and yet he naively ignores the lesson to be drawn from this, which is that women are often hypergamous to dominant men of outgroups, and even when they aren't, the invaders simply rape them. Never has there been a mass migration in human history that was marked by equality of social and sexual outcome, 
Speaking on the genetic legacy of conquest, Reich says that evidence of the antiquity of inequality should motivate us to deal in a more sophisticated way with it today. But what does that even mean? That academics and intellectuals need to encourage an equal number of men and women to breed without groups? Moreover, Reich's stance is essentially that because once upon a time Europe was not as homogenous as it is today, there's no argument for biologically based nationalism. He also often brings up his Jewish heritage. Quote, I went for nine years to a Jewish school and spent many summers in Jerusalem. From my parents as well as from my grandparents and cousins, I imbibed a strong sense of difference, a feeling that our group was special, and a knowledge that I would cause disappointment and embarrassment if I married someone non-Jewish." Now, Reich is self-admittedly not a religious person. However, what's interesting is that he tries to insinuate that Judaism was a kind of proto-universalist perspective toward all of humanity. Quote, after reading the Passover story, Jews intuitively understand how within their population, numbering millions of people, they are related to each other and the past. The story allows Jews to think of those millions of co-religionists as direct relations and to treat them with equal respect and seriousness even if they do not understand their exact relationships. To break out from the trap of thinking of the world from the perspective of the relatively small families we were raised in." Unquote. This is ludicrous. Judaism was not breaking out from any kind of trap. The ancient Israelites slaughtered entire rival groups in the Levant, and they forbade intermarriage with them. The very concept of Judaism is ethno-religious nationalism. Coincidentally, despite his strong feelings about embracing admixture, David Reich married a fellow Ashkenazi Jew. Now, while I highly appreciate much of the work on ancient human DNA that David Reich has done, I fear that he's been using his findings to further delegitimize national sovereignty and to undermine the natural human desire to protect one's ethnic, cultural, and genetic identity. Reich's work is conveniently being published and promoted at a time when there is a tyrannical push for massive third world migration into Europe and European-derived nations, and he does virtually nothing to distinguish between the ancient peoples of the Russian steppe invading Europe over thousands of years and massive amounts of equatorial peoples coming to Western nations in the span of half a century. Seemingly, in stark contrast to the Jewish propensity during the 20th century to deny the existence of race, in 1941, an American Jew, Theodore N. Kaufman, called for the systematic extermination of Germans in his book, Germany Must Perish. Quote, Since Germans are the perennial disturbers of the world's peace, they must be dealt with like any homicidal criminals. But it is unnecessary to put the whole German nation to the sword. It is more humane to sterilize them. The army group